know that you are riding in the high places of life. If you were not here the first night, in fact, all the meetings, because God's servants brought a powerful word the day I arrived. So go listen. Now that God has positioned you, because the Bible says that he has raised us up, and we are seated in the heavenly places. So it's not a prayer, oh God, let me ride in the high places. That's where you are seated. I just want to teach you the palace manners, the table manners that you need to be aware of, to be conscious of, now that you understand that you are seated in the heavenly places. You're riding in the high places of life. The first thing is that you must have a correct self-esteem. Correct self-esteem. You are not what you went through. You are not what you are going through. You are only being processed. God does not throw up. God lifts up. God is not raising a bunch of back boneless banana Christians. They don't call me mama for nothing. I've been through some things. What you are going through is just an event. It doesn't define you. Correct self-esteem. There is a way people that ride on the high places of life carry themselves. They're not proud, but they are confident. Don't let anything bow your head. You made a mistake before. It was just an event. It's to remind you that you are still a human being. B-E-I-N-G. And not a human being. Past participle. B-E-E-N. Self-esteem that is correct. It doesn't matter what anybody says about you. Do not allow anybody's opinion of you become your constant reality. You're too fat. You're too slim. You're not beautiful. You're too fat. Do not allow it to be your reality. Do not let anybody use your mistakes against you. My car, chapter number seven. Let that be the starting point this morning. My car, chapter seven, verse number 19. Message translation. My car is in the Old Testament, so if you are in Matthew, you are far. <laughs> My car seven. In fact, let me read from verse number 18 to 20. Message translation. Where is the God who can compare with you? Wiping the slate clean of guilt. Turning a blind eye, a deaf ear, to the past sins of your punched and precious people. <laughs> you don't nurse your anger and you don't stay angry long. For mercy is your specialty. That's what you love most. And compassion is on its way to us. You stamp out our wrongdoing. You will sink our sins to the bottom of the ocean. So let me remind you that when God forgives you, when you make a mistake, you committed a sin and you repented genuinely. When God forgives you, he dumps your sin, your mistake in the ocean of forgetfulness. 
And he puts a signpost, no fishing. No fishing, no fishing. Stop fishing. Stop living your life by your past. Have a correct self-esteem. Wake up in the morning and after thanking God, thank yourself. Learn to reward yourself. That's how we stay on the high places. You walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. You take care of everybody except yourself. Husband, wife, children, church, business, parents. Some of you send money to Africa, to people that are not even grateful. People that don't understand how your cold is cold. They think you just pick pounds here. And you send 10 pounds to them and they are complaining. How much did you send? They don't know the bills, the kind of bills you pay here. You are primary to you. Every other person is secondary. That's how we roll up there. That's how we stay there. Do not let anybody demean you. Stop handing over the driver's seat of your life to people. Remember, if you don't say I am, nobody will say thou art. Like yourself. Learn to love yourself. Feel deserving of the love that God has for you and that people have for you. Hillary Clinton was with her husband at the gas station one day. And the pump, the man, I don't know what you guys call it here, the man that would pump the whatever, the attendant, thank you, used to be Hillary's ex. And Bill said to Hillary, so you will have been the wife of an attendant. <laughs> Trust Hillary. She replied, no he will have become the president of America. Stop shortchanging yourself. Look at me. And then, uh, and then uh, somebody looks at me and says, ah, your dress is beautiful. <laughs> this one, I bought it. Shh. It is a sign of low self-esteem to not know how to receive compliments. It's not me, oh, I can't go though. It's Jesus. God is comfortable. My dear, he cannot share cardboard with you, but he can share Shekinah with you. He's a correct God. He does not care that people thank you. Ah, ah, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Shut up. Tell the person, you're welcome. Receive it. It is religion, it's not spirituality. Jesus is Jesus. Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. You need deliverance. Remember, the first law of education is repetition. We've had it over and over and over and over and over again. And then we practice it. Ah, we thank God. Oh, we thank God. God is very comfortable. God is not a man. There's nothing you take that can me, that can shake him. He's seen it all. Enjoy life. That is how we roll there. Yeah. Help me look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I thank God for you, but I won't let you choke me. Some of you, if they call you now to come and take offering, the way you will run to the altar, what is chasing you? It shows in the way you walk. It shows in the way you carry yourself. Your, your breast is shaking. Everything. Carry yourself with dignity. Do you see the way the queen carried herself? You are a royal priesthood. A holy nation. Every human being is a psychologist. And they look at you. They 
assess you. Even by the way you carry yourself. This is the way you carry your bag. This is the way you walk. Even if there's nothing in your pocket, it's not about the cash. You were born rich. Self-esteem. Job chapter 12 and verse number 3. What you know, I know I am not inferior to you. It's in the Bible. Job chapter 13 and verse 2. What you know, I know I am not inferior to you. It's in the Bible. Look at me very well, everybody. You love me. I know you honor me, but I am not your hero. You are your hero. I can inspire you. I can mentor you. I can bless you. But look, in your life, you are more important than I am in your life. I need to possibilitize your mentality. I need to let you know that you are special. You are important. You're not inferior to anybody. This is the reason why some women married wrongly. This is the reason why some men missed it in their marital destinies. Like yourself. Invest into yourself. Believe in yourself. That's how we roll. In that place. Courage. There is a way we eat upstairs. Riding on the high... I don't know where pastor got that. It must be the Holy Spirit. Table manners. There is a way we eat there. You don't eat like this. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. That's not how we eat there. We eat with our mouths closed. We don't eat anyhow. And we don't eat anywhere. You go for a party. And they have not served that to your area. Hey, yes, yes. Sky, sky. <laughs> because of what? Your love rice. <laughs> you don't remember to serve it. That's okay. You go eat at home. Or you let the server be very close to you. And you whisper. See, you cannot even finish one egg. Excuse me. If not serve this table. <laughs> Tell your neighbor that's how we roll. There's a way we dress there. We don't dress just anyhow. We are in transparent outfits. Living our cleavages. In case you are trying to impress men, no man wants a public property. Your breasts, everything is showing in the name of fashion. You will even tell the sea mistress to cut it. And you think a man will marry you like that. And you think your husband is happy. He may not say anything. You know men are like masquerades. They speak less. And you are wondering why the man is, is looking out. You've shown everything. Even you, you know what you are wearing does not glorify God. That's not how we roll there. We look at you and we can tell whether you are operating in the high places of life. On that plane, we don't pull other people down. I was reading the scriptures this morning in the book of Titus. It says, speak no evil of any man. You know why? Life is not governed by miracles. Life is governed by laws, principles. You saw it, you must repeat. You tear other people down. Hundred people are waiting to tear you down. So a lot of people, they're born again. They speak in tongues. They come to church. They don't miss services. But they lack table manners. The Bible says, and David behaved himself wisely. There's a way you behave yourself. Because you are at the top. The next thing is about the way you think. And I'm going to speak to you now. For the next few minutes, as a coach, I'm a transformational coach. I'm certified 
And I want you to listen very carefully. People pay me to teach what I'm about to tell you now in a few minutes. Everything is created twice. First as a thought, then as a thing. Thoughts are forces. Powerful. Look at the dress you are wearing now. It did not start its existence on the day you bought it. It first existed in the mind of somebody. FFA is going to wear a dress. So City of David, Cambridge, on November the 12th. Should it be red color or green? Should it be long sleeve or short? Somebody thought about it. And then it came into existence. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You cannot be thinking low thoughts and expect to ride on the high places of life. Stop thinking about what you don't want. Start thinking about what you want. Nothing, not even God, nothing can withstand the assault of predominant thinking. Genesis chapter number 6. They were going to build a tower. The almighty God said, let us go downstairs. Because nothing shall be able to stop these people. Not even me. From this that they have begun to imagine. Nothing can resist the assault of predominant thinking. We think on two planes. Consciously and subconsciously. If you want to know what you are thinking, look at your life. Sometimes we are binding the devil. Satan, I bind. The devil says, I don't even know your address. It's not the devil. The devil is not the opposite of God. The devil is not omnipresent. He can be in Afghanistan at the same time and be in Nigeria. So it's not about the devil. It's about your thoughts. As a man thinketh. So you see, it's not about prayers. It's not about fasting. It's not about singing in the choir. It's not about reading the Bible. These things are important. What are you thinking about? From now, I want you to please remember this. Start thinking about what you are thinking about. I wake up in the morning, even before I pray. I go to the bathroom, I look at the mirror, and I declare. And let me quickly add this. On that plane, we operate from the point view of joy. The Holy Spirit, because we are Christians, we're people of faith, and so we have the God advantage. Demons operate very well where there is sadness, strife, because the devil is a thief, a liar. A destroyer. God operates where there is joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I didn't talk about happiness. I said joy. Because happiness is dependent on how bear. Happiness depends on how, what you get. Joy is a spirit. You hear me wake up in the morning and you hear things like, I'm so happy and grateful that that's how we operate in that level look at people that are successful they may not be aware that that's what they do but they are people that you want to be close to I have some mentors no dull moments around them you can't catch Bishop Oyedepo downcast Always. There is something. Always. Please be intentional about your life. Choose to be happy. Was it the first night? Did you see the way I made all of you laugh? 
even the preacher, I loved my tummy ached. God bless you for the protocol that you sent to pick me up from the airport. We laughed. We were speaking about Nigeria. We la- Elvis and Temi, we laughed. When last did you laugh that your belly ached? Every time you are frowning your face, let me tell you a psychological thing. It takes 13 muscles on your face to smile. It takes 69 to frown. Psychological fact. So if you are always frowning, you will have wrinkles. You will look older than your age. When you laugh, it's even according to the Bible. Laughter is medicine. You pump blood to your brain. If you're a happy person. When you feel depressed, you're tired. I don't even know what's happening in this in my life. I don't even understand. We all go through it. That is not the time to go on three-day fast. That's not the time to read the book of Habakkuk to Zephaniah. It is the time to watch a comedy. I'm still spiritual. I got born again 45 years ago. So you can't talk to me about Jesus and tell me I don't know Jesus. I know Jesus. My spiritual sense, correct. Don't be deceived by this lipstick. That is the time to go see a movie. Not just a movie, but a movie that will make you laugh. Oh, you laugh. Some of you, that's when you will now start fasting because you think your mo- no, your grandmother's step wife. Is there something like step wife? It's after you. That's when you will now start binding and losing. When last, as a man, did you become so humorous that your wife just laughed? Some of you, your children are just wishing that they will go to college <laughs> and escape you. Forget! What are you? Ah! Uncle, you will just kill yourself for nothing. There's no perfect children. There's no perfect anybody. Everything. Who put the cup? Who told the jail? Who told Madam? High blood pressure. You'll not be binding the devil. If since I started speaking now, you've not laughed, you need deliverance. Please remember that one female preacher came from Nigeria. And made you laugh. An accomplishment. Yesterday, I made you pray. That's a balance. But life is too short for you to leave it sad. Sometimes in some areas, two plus two may never be equal. In spite of it, Habakkuk chapter three, laugh. Because whether you like it or not, that's then we still be resolved. Look back. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 37. Look back. And remember the goodnesses of God. When it was a quarter to shame and God showed up. Remember now. This one too shall pass. It may look tough. But that's the way God has ordained life. Genesis chapter 1. And it was morning. And evening, the first day. No matter how dark and how long the night is, there must be a morning. If not, the day is not over. So you're in the dark period. Don't worry. Morning is coming. The next thing, I'm closing very soon. I hope I'm helping you. People that operate there. This is, I'm talking to you about our table manners. 
This is how we eat there. And I've shared quite a few things with you. They are grateful people. And I'm going to spend some, some few minutes on that. Here's the next thing I want to say. Ungrateful people are not bad. They are evil. <laughs> Ungrateful people are evil. Avoid them. Even the almighty God tiptoes around them. Luke chapter number 17. Jesus said, ah, ah. Ten were healed. Where are the nine? So he was expecting. Up there. You know why? Because gratitude is a multiplier. John chapter number six. He gave thanks. And the bread multiplied. John chapter 11. Lord, I thank you because you always hear me. Lazarus! The reason why some people go down is because of this thing that looks simple that I'm sharing with you this morning. Ingratitude is a destroyer. When you are grateful, you turn your battles over to God. That's what you do. David said, 1 Samuel 17, verse 37, the God that delivered me from the mouth of the lion and the bear. You see, he was, he was bringing God into the situation. He said, you defy the armies. I've never heard about armies. Armies is plural. I studied English language in university before I decided to go for law. So I know what I'm talking about. You don't have British armies. You have British army. Nigerian army. So that sounded funny. But you see, every comma in the Bible, every word in the Bible is meaningful. You know what David was saying? Goliath, you don't understand. I am bringing in the army of heaven and the army of Israel. Armies. Gratitude. Ungrateful people are not bad, they are evil. What did you do for me after all? Then I was in your house. How much did you give me after all? Because there is a little misunderstanding now. You now sum up everything that people have done for you. And you even use it against them. You are evil. Be grateful to people. Be grateful to God. As a man, after having sex with your wife, thank her. Don't just knock. <laughs> after eating, thank your wife. When your pastor blesses you, Thank him. If you cannot reach him, write a note. Drop it in the offering pocket. Thank you, sir, for pastoring me well this month. Put a little seed. Write a check in his name. Meet your pastor's wife. Thank you because she ministers to the person that ministers to you. And many times we just overlook them. If your pastor's home is not what it should be, he won't be able to pastor you well, or else you'll be sucking negative breasts, milk. Once in a while, walk up to their children, their biological children, and bless them. And thank them for sharing their parents with you. Some of you, there are people where you're coming from, that blessed you when you were nothing. When nobody would have touched you with the longest of poles. People that were there for you. They held your hands and they taught you the ABCs of life. When last did you say thank you to them? 
Now you have arrived. That's not how we roll up there. That's not how to maintain your status there. Gratitude. I met my husband when I was 17. We were in the same church. He proposed marriage to me before I was 20. We got married when I was 22 plus. I became a pastor's wife at 23. I didn't know nothing. That was a lot. This was my final year in school. And I had a baby. He would teach me how to preach. He gave me his God-given pupils to rehearse. At home, he would give me the points. You're preaching on Sunday, darling. He would give me the points, number one, number two, number three. I don't know how to say this. I'm shy and all that. Can you believe that? And I would go to preach, and he would tell me, don't look at the people, just be looking at me, be staring at me, and be thumping up, and you're doing well, you're doing well. And when I'm done, he would take over. When I would be feeling terrible, I feel like dying. He would take over and we say, did you, did you all not enjoy my wife? <laughs> and I'd be wondering, what, what, is this man okay? What's he saying? But you see, he was investing into me. In a situation and a place, your pastor can tell, where women were not only demonized, but deprived of life. I was the first woman that was allowed to stand side by side with her Pentecostal husband in ministry. What names did they not call me? What name did they not call my husband in particular? Because he showcased their insecurities. But look at you today. I told him recently, darling, my voice may be loud in the world, but your voice is louder. Because the person that didn't allow you to die is superior to the person that allowed you to be wealthy. Because if you had died, you wouldn't have been wealthy. There is no honor I will not give my husband. After God, even before my father, is my husband. He's my helper. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not. Why do you forget what you should remember? Why? Forget not. That means you have the ability to forget. Travel to your remotest past. Till my father went home to be with the Lord, I, I honored him. The man that led me to the Lord Jesus Christ, September 14, 1978. He's my Baptist, because I'm a Baptist. He's my Baptist choir director. He led me to Jesus. From the book of Galatians chapter 5. I can't even remember anything he said. But I broke down in tears and I gave my heart to Jesus that day. Till tomorrow, I've placed him on salary. And I said to him, sir, even if you don't win any other soul, I'm enough. Because of the ripple effect of my life. Forget not. Grateful people remain on the high places. Grateful people. You wonder why your breakthrough has been epileptic. You are ungrateful. You come late to church. Praise worship time, you must be chatting and discussing. I saw some people yesterday. What was going on? Almost 90% of the time I was preaching, you were talking with another person. And you thought you came to church? It's better to be cursed than to be unblessed. Because it's the next point I'm about to make for you to stay there. Travel to your remotest past and be grateful. There are people that you owe till Jesus comes. You owe them. 
You can change your mind, but you cannot change your history. That's how we roll there. Some of you, you will sneeze. Somebody will say, bless you. You will pretend as if you didn't hear. Somebody will help you open the car door to even say thank you. Your biro dropped. Somebody picked it up. You, you'll be doing as if you're in a hurry. To even say thank you. Cannot come out of your mouth. You finish dressing. Somebody say you look good. You cannot admit. You cannot thank the person. Because, because you paid when you went to the salon. And your hair was cut or your, your hair was made. You just walked out. You cannot say thank you to the person that made it. To even give a tip is a problem to some people. Tip. You calculate and calculate and calculate God out of everything. Some people even take change from God. When they want to pay their tithe, 23 pounds, 930. What do you call your saying here? Calculate to the last. We are all children of God, though. Don't misquote me, oh. This is Bible. God loves everybody, but I'm not sure God likes everybody. I'm going to show you the scripture. For God so loved the world. Not for God so liked the world. And then first, first Chronicles chapter 28, David said, For he liked me among my father's sons. Because we're not serving God the same way. We're not worshipping God the same way. Some people, this year, they have not knelt down before God. Don't talk of prostrating worship. They're too psychedelic. Oh, God. I don't understand. And God is asking the archangel, what's he saying? <laughs> you that you were born in the village. Maybe I knew you when you were in primary <laughs> Not that you are in England. Nobody hears what you are saying. To prove that you have traveled abroad. Riding on the high places of life. This is how we roll there. The secrets of champions and their stories. That's how we roll there. The next one is honor. Honor is a seed. When people honor others, don't think they are hero worshipping. I'm 60, so what's the age difference between your pastor and myself? <laughs> but it's not age. I've told you over and over, we'll be age mates, but we're not grace mates. No, you're mates. This kingdom is compared to a family. A relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, husband and wife. No, your mate. No, your senior. No, your colleague. My father, Bishop Oedepo, told me one day that there are people that, as big as he is today, if he hits them, his lamb will be put out in the obscure darkness. I, he told me. There are people you don't stretch out your hand to shake first. Every relationship has a posture. There is hierarchy in the high places of life. You know your mate. Honor is a city. Let me dissect that a little. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. For they that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me, I will hold in light esteem. You know how you hold your rag? How do you honor God? Do you take him for granted? Does God matter to you? How do you give him offering? You squeeze it? It's dishonoring. Malachi chapter 3. Can you give that to your governor? Some people, God has lifted them and lifted them and lifted them. They've not changed their offering since they got to this country. Ten pounds. 
You are waiting for God to demote you. With all the blessings that God has given to you. October, I'm already planning. What my offering will be next year. I don't give the same thing to God. Every year, no way. Proverbs 3.18 My path shine. No, that's not. It's not Proverbs three eighteen. My path, the path of the just, is as a shining light. Give me that scripture. It's three eighteen. Four eighteen. Thank you. Thank you. I like the message translation. The longer you live, the brighter you will shine. Thank you. Yes, four eighteen. It shines ever brighter. Amplified version. I love those versions. How can you give God as offering every Sunday 50 pounds in 2022 and it's the same thing you are still giving? Top it, even if it's plus one cent. So start thinking now. 2024 is almost here. And God said that year is going to be our friend. Don't forget. 2024, my friend. You too, honor God. The people that are saying, we don't even know what pastors are using. They're just asking, don't go to any church where they don't tell you to give. You don't prosper financially by prayers. Search the scriptures. There are 25 main reasons why people prosper financially. You don't prosper financially by fasting. You give. Cheerfully or mournfully, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but it's the law. It must come back to you. So what do you want to give God as your offering in 2024? Start planning now. You can't tell God that you're going to give him 100 pounds and then you lose your job. If you lose your job, that means something big is coming. Put God in your plan. You think it's your money we are using to wear outfits? Are you kidding me? If I tell you my offering, recently my husband was preaching in church. He said, There is nobody in this ministry that gives to this ministry like my wife. Because I made a vow to the Lord that there are prayers my husband will never pray again because I'm a member of his church. As far as money is concerned. Did you see the house God helped me to build for lepers? This is the 23rd year I've been taking care of lepers. There are forces working for me. I'm unsinkable. I understand the principles of wealth. So when Bishop Oedeko says I can never be poor, I understand what he's saying. I have cornered God. <laughs> this one, you don't need to be born again to understand it. It's a principle. Life is governed by principles. I'm a coach. If you jump up, you must come down. It's the law of gravity. It's the law. So you don't want to jump. You don't want to jump up and come down. And you want to. You want your flight, your plane, to drop. So you don't understand it. You go to British Airways that has applied some laws for over a hundred years. You paid them for the law. You didn't pay for your ticket. You paid for application of law. You say, I want to go to London from Lagos and I don't understand it because anything that goes up must come down. But you, you have done it over and over. Take money. So British Airways applies the law of aerodynamics. The law of pull, the law of weight, the law of thrust. You shut the door and you sit down. They even give you food so that you will forget. <laughs> and then you don't drop and you get here. Laws are applied. You don't need to be born again to have wealth. You don't need to be born again. Is Dan Gote praying like you? Bill Gates, his marriage is evil. He can't even sustain a marriage. But he can sustain wealth. 
And some of you Christians, we are so religious. You can never attract what you attack. You look for wealthy people on Instagram. You hear about wealthy people. You even use your mouth to call him by name. The man that can give back to your father. Just because you want to show that you too, you can type something. And because data is free between 7 p.m. and something, something. <laughs> You're now attacking wealthy people. When I go online and I look for, I always go online to look for wealthy people. People that are, that have done 10 times what I'm trying to do. Whether in ministry or in business. Because I'm in business. I look at them and I love on them. Some of them are Muslims. Ellie Gaza's wife. She's the fourth wife. That's your business. It's not my business. She decided who to marry. Go and meet her. I'm looking at her bag. I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at her, the, the business acumen. I'm looking at her carriage. If you can behold it, you can become it. But all you do is you release negative energy. Look at them. They are shopping our money. It's the offering we gave. How much did you give? Do you notice that people that don't give, they are the loudest critics. As I stand before you now, I have a resort. 40 rooms, the hotel. One cup of any church is not there. I have hair salon. Nail salon. One of the reasons why I wear African attire, if not that, Pastor Yinka and uh, the husband bought this for me yesterday. Now, you know, <laughs> it's because that's what I sell. I sell it. I sell food. Hamala, Hogmono, Egusi, Ewedu. Sorry, this uh, I'm speaking in tongues because uh, <laughs> swimming pool. You come there, you bring your children. You pay me. I have event center. I have shares. Because I want to be able to wear what I like. And somebody's not saying it was the offering they gave during Thanksgiving. Which Thanksgiving? How much is your own dear self? Is your money missing? You can go to God and collect it back if you think that's what we are using to buy our Range Rover. Now we are shouting and shouting. When I was very young, I think I was about 18 or so, I was in a bus one day. You know these public buses? I was going to see my parents. And this bus conductor, very elderly, I was wondering in my heart, what was this man doing as a bus conductor? And in Nigeria, they will load everything. The conductor will not have his space to sit. So he will sit on top of the battery or something. And, and then there was a man that sat. I was there too. And I can't not remember what happened. They started this argument and, you know. And this man, well-dressed, looking very good. You will know, those are the people that went to St. Andrews. You know that kind of thing. I don't know what St. Andrews is here. Like Harvard. Cambridge, Okay. So as he was, you know, they were talking and talking and all that. This bus conductor looked at the man and said, I'll do a transliteration. Yes, I'm not sable, sable, I'm not sable, sable. See how he's speaking grammar. Is it grammar, grammar? This man replied and said, when they were jingling, school bell, where were you? The conductor went, Psh. Now that we are shouting that you should buy shares. Now that we are shouting and teaching you how to be wealthy. So that tomorrow you will not go online and be abusing people that had it. Now we are telling you. Now that they are jingling the bell. You better hear. I love this church. You are pulling... A lot out of me. Honor is a seed. If you have been dishonoring people, stop it. Don't ever cut the phone on your parents. Don't ever be rude to your parents on the phone. You have five kinds of parents. Number one, you have your biological parents. 
your mother that bore you in her womb, no matter how provoked you are, even if she's a witch, honor her. That's your mother-in-law. Honor her. That's your natural mother. So you have biological parents, you have natural parents. And as a parent, you have biological children, you have natural children. Your biological children came from your womb. Your natural children are the children that your children will marry. Don't just flip it. You have adopted parents. They didn't give birth to you, but they've been a blessing to your life. You have spiritual parents. People that labor over you. The Bible says we should give them double honor. Double. I'm not a member of Redeemed Christian Church of God. But the kind of honor I give to Mama, Deboi, and Baba, some of you redeemed people, you don't give it. Forces working in my life. Mama Deboi was in our bedroom for almost two hours, sharing life with my husband and I. Honor is a seed. Then you have your destiny parents. Honor. Learn to honor people. People greet you and you just stand like one o'clock. It's a sign of pride. I don't care who you are. Honor them. Even if you don't bow, honor them. Don't talk to people anyhow. Come, 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 come here. That driver, we don't know what he can become tomorrow. My life is a story. You don't know what that girl can become tomorrow. Treat people well. Treat them with dignity. They can go to bed as prisoners, slaves, and wake up. Married to prime ministers. Treat people well. All of you are fantastic, but I don't fear you. You know who I fear? These little children. You. What can color they become? Maybe you, can, you cannot become God. But these children, we don't know what they can become. You see me sometimes, I'm passing. You see one girl, ran. I paused to hug her. She will remember tomorrow. I may open a door one day and she'll be the one sitting there. She will remember. Children, don't forget. You too, you remember the people that were good to you now. I remember the people that were bad. Sometimes I'm going and I'm giving them high five. No. Children. Don't, don't get into a place and then you become saucy and rude. Talk to the bus driver anyhow. Talk to the Uber, Uber driver anyhow. Some of them are doing Uber. They are PhD holders. Tied. And you don't know what God has. Him. Be good to people. Be nice to people. That's how we roll. In that place. Oh no. <laughs> Honor the people that are in your life. Honor them. Let me speak about two more. And then I'll pray over the oil and anoint you. You need a mentor. A mentor is the shortest route to your next level. I'm not talking about tormentors. People that have done what you are trying to do. You can have a spiritual mentor, you can have a ministry mentor. You can have a marriage mentor, you can have a business mentor, but you need a mentor. Sometimes you need to pay because free is a trap. The first coach I got, I was 56, she was 36. She said to even see me, you have to pay one million naira. I paid it. She said, you have to pay for my flight. I paid it. You have to pay for the hotel. I'm going to say, I paid it. Because I just knew in that season of my life, I'm more than a preacher. 
I'm saying it all. Where have I not been? What have I not preached? You know, T.D. Jake said that. He noticed at a point in his life, he started dying. Grandchildren had come. Children had prospered. Everyone had preached everything. And he noticed that it was the same age his father died. Same age his grandfather died. So he thought... <laughs> and he had to get a coach. And then he changed the way he was dressing. He started dressing like young people. Psychology. Some of you, once you are 60. When I was turning 60, I prepared. He's still on my table at the office. FFA, welcome to the golden 60s. The best season of your life. He said there. So I don't feel 60. How this time a pie everywhere. And tie your headgear in a way that you look older than your age. Okay, don't you know I'm 65? You're killing yourself. You be doing as if you are old. Mama, bless what? Ma, I'm come here. You're killing yourself. That's why we'll be 70 next year. We still do five kilometers exercise. Do you know now? Doctors may be here. Medical people, you are here. You know that now they are saying that if you sit down for two hours without standing up, it's like you have smoked cigarettes. And some of you, that's what you do every day at the office. Tommy is showing. Bonbon is showing. Everything is showing. You're not standing up. When this lady came and we met, she said, for every hour you spend with me, it's one million. She has what I wanted. I paid. But I tried not to spend more than three hours. I was squeezing. God used that to change my life. My husband and I were living in Canada. I paid $38,000. That was the charge. To another coach. Just to teach me. If I feel that everybody knows, you need a mentor. See, Jesus comes. There will always be somebody in the front. Just like the land. No matter how fast you are, you will meet the land. <laughs> Who is your mentor? Who coaches you? Who do you pay money, time, and attention to coach you? That's how to get faster. I keep saying this. Pastor K, I looked at my mates and I couldn't find my mates among my mates. I'm sharing my secrets with you. I say have coaches. So I might pay $14,000. Just to coach me in one aspect. How can I be wealthy? I give her the power to get wealth. You've been quoting it and quoting it and quoting it, yet it's not sure. So you know there is more to it. Power. Knowledge. Now I understand how to create wealth. Now I understand it. Who is your mentor? If you would just spend some time out of the time you used to pray to think about these things that I've shared with you today. I've shared a lot with you. People pay me millions. I prepare people for political offices. Some of these things I share with them. There's a course I teach and I coach people on. It's $10,000. Ethics and etiquette. There's a way you pick your call as someone holding a public office. There's a way you behave. I've shared quite a few things with you. I close by saying, people that are riding on the high places of life, they are givers. I wanted to, if you made, if you took notes, or you might want to go back on YouTube to listen to this, so that you can know how to tick the box. 
This thing that I've shared with you is not just rocket science. They are principles. Genesis 8.22. Life is not governed by miracles. Life is governed by principles, laws. This is it. This is how people prosper. And we still pray, we still fast, we still sing. But these things are in place. The heaven and the heaven of heavens belong to God. But the earth he has given to the sons of men. See what the sons of men have done with the earth. See aviation. See technology. See health. See. What do you want to do with the earth? Steve Harvey said some time ago. And I have done the same thing. He googled. How many plots of land do we have on earth? Then he googled. How many human beings are on earth? How many plots should each person have? <laughs> some people have gotten the ones that some people should even get. Because nature will not allow vacuum to linger. Some people, they just sit there criticizing people. Where the world is going. We don't even know what next now. If you go out now after the service, just look up. Or in the night, look up. There are footprints on the moon. Human beings. I said, Pastor, that one day, this will be our office. Who could have said that you will, you will press send? And Australia will say, Mosiba, I have received it. Bam, like this. We don't even know what next they will say now. Because now they are saying that there will be aircrafts that will have swimming pool. Aircrafts that will have malls. Football field. I believe them. Maybe one day they will say, just do like this. Food will enter your mouth. I believe them. <laughs> These human beings. Have you been on the flight before? And then the air crew, whatever, will tell you. On this flight today, we have 347 passengers, including 12 children. We have something, something to it. Emirates does it a lot. 15 nationalities. They will carry cups, carry loads. Some of you, you have by my side, by my side, when you are going to Nigeria, you see the load suspended in the air. The Wright brothers, their father was a bishop. They didn't have the pilot license. They were bicycle repairers. When they announced that they will fly, their father, Bishop Anointed, said to them, you will rot in hell. Everybody has said it's not possible. Look at the majesty of aviation today. After this conference, go and sit down and think. Think. If you're not yet born again, give your heart to Jesus. You're missing. It's the best thing that can happen to you. You see the way I'm saying it with a broad smile. Your life will be changed. You will start living. You will have access to God and everything. 